Now, I'll be discussing a series of ECGs and coronary angiogram shots. The aim is to identify the culprit vessel from the ECG. Identification of culprit vessel is important during primary angioplasty. During primary angioplasty, initially a diagnostic coronary catheter is used to take the angiogram of the non-culprit vessel. After that, the guide catheter, which is more stiffer and having a better internal lumen, is taken and the culprit vessel is injected. So, this procedure saves a little bit of time. That's why identification of culprit vessel is important during coronary angiography prior to primary angioplasty. Because you know that in primary angioplasty, time means muscle. If you can save a little bit of time, then that will be very useful to salvage more of myocardium. This is an ECG in acute myocardial infarction. You can see the prominent ST elevation with uh, uh, sloping of the ST segment in lead 2, lead 3, AVF and extensive ST depression in almost all of the leads, lead 1, AVR, AVL, V12, V5. There is also T inversion in AVL, V1, V2 and uh, biphasic T waves here also. So extensive STT changes in the presence of inferior wall myocardial infarction. First you will think of right coronary occlusion and the other ST depressions could be reciprocal ST depression. But since it is too extensive, you would also like to think of multivessel disease with current occlusion being in right coronary artery. And alternate possibility is circumflex occlusion because circumflex occlusion also can produce inferior wall infarction. This is the left coronary angiogram in that person. I can see a total occlusion of a circumflex. Left circumflex is totally occluded. And there are lesions in the obtuse marginal branch as well. Multiple lesions in the obtuse marginal branch. It's a good sized vessel. And lesions are not limited to the circumflex territory. You can see diffuse disease in the left anterior descending coronary artery with uh, two lesions being rather tight. But it is not just two discrete lesions. Almost the whole of the left anterior descending coronary artery is involved. This could explain the ischemia at distance, extensive ST depression in multiple leads. Fortunately, the left main appears normal and there is a dive reflex which is seen, meaning that there is no osteal stenosis. This is the right coronary angiogram of the same person and uh, there is a severe stenosis of the right coronary artery and a haziness here which is possibly a thrombus. So now we are in a dilemma. Which one is the current occlusion? The right coronary artery causing inferior wall infarction or circumflex total occlusion causing inferior wall infarction. With a pro if this is considered as a thrombus there, this could be fresh and the culprit vessel but usually in acute infarction, ST elevation infarction, you know, uh, see total occlusion rather than uh, a near total disease with uh, thrombus. But uh, there are a lot of variations and that is one of the limitations for using ECG for identifying the culprit vessel. There is also a possibility that uh, there was total occlusion and uh, it was partially recanalized. We do not know. Anyway, you have seen multivessel disease which fits somewhat with the ECG because extensive ST depression indicated that there could be distant ischemia in the LAD territory and ST elevation was almost equal in lead 2 and lead 3. In inferior wall infarction due to right coronary occlusion, ST elevation in lead 3 will be more than that in lead 2 because of the orientation of the leads. Lead 3 will be oriented this way, lead 2 will be oriented this way. 
So the, that would be more in favor of circumflex lesion. And if it is oriented this way, it will be more in favor of RCA, right coronary lesion. So even though there are some limitations in the ECG, there is a good amount of correlation with what you suspected from the ECG and what you saw in the angiogram. Of course, when there is multivessel disease, ECG can be altered because after all, it is only the sum total of the electrical activity of the heart that you are seeing on the surface. You are not recording from that territory alone. Now, have a look at this ECG from another person. Such extensive ST depression as in previous case is not there. There is mild ST depression in V1 and V2. In the presence of ST elevation in inferior leads and lateral leads. So, presence of ST elevation in lateral leads, meaning that it is an infralateral myocardial infarction, would definitely be in more favor of left circumflex lesion. But occasionally, a very dominant right coronary artery could supply in the lateral region also, but that is uncommon. More likely, in an inferior lateral infarction, you would think of circumflex occlusion. Now look at this ECG, you have evidence of evolved infralateral infarction, minimal ST elevation after Q wave and T inversion in 2, 3 and AVF along with same changes in P5, V6. And there is minimal ST depression in 1 and AVL as well as in V1 and V2. The difference here is that there are tall R waves in the anterior leads. So that indicates there is a posterior wall infarction. This is the reciprocal of a Q wave in anterior leads, a mirror image. And this ST depression is equivalent to ST elevation because if you keep, keep a mirror here and see, you can see that it will be Q ST elevation and T inversion. Upright T will be equivalent to a T inversion if you record from the posterior surface of the uh, chest. Posterior leads can be recorded which will show typical ST elevation infarction pattern. So this is a combination of inferior, lateral and posterior wall infarction. Typically seen in circumflex lesions in which all the three walls can be supplied by uh, a dominant left circumflex coronary artery. I have been mentioning about dominant left coronary artery. This is the angiogram of a dominant left coronary artery. Not from those cases, but uh, near normal. It is for demonstration of the LPDA. LPDA is the left posterior descending artery, which is not routinely there, only for those with dominant left coronary artery. It is the terminal branch of the left circumflex. Dominance means the artery which crosses the crux. Crux is the junction of the atrioventricular and interventricular grooves posteriorly. On the posterior surface of the crux, the artery which crosses to the opposite side is called the dominant artery. So, when left circumflex is dominant, it will supply the posterior descending artery. When right coronary is dominant, that will supply the posterior descending artery. For comparison, this is the angiogram of a non-dominant left coronary artery. You can see that left circumflex is supplying obtuse marginal branches but not the LPDA or left posterior descending artery. So in this particular person, the posterior descending artery will be supplied by the right coronary artery. So this is a patient with non-dominant left circumflex. But remember that whether it is the left coronary which is dominant or right coronary which is dominant, always most of the left ventricular myocardium is supplied by left coronary artery which has much more extensive myocardial supply. This is a coronary angiogram from a person with a dominant right coronary artery. You can see that it is supplying the right ventricular branches posterior descending artery. We usually does not call, do not call it as right PDA, you will just call PDA. When it is from the left, you call it as LPDA. 
and posterior left ventricular branches are also there so this is a dominant right coronary artery and this will correspond to the region of the crux the bifurcation is usually at the region of the crux now look at this ecg the prominent features which i have marked are st elevation in v1 and avr in addition there is extensive st depression in all other leads this is usually a typical pattern for left main coronary artery stenosis st elevation in avr is supposed to be a feature of left main coronary stenosis so this is a highly dangerous situation and st elevation in v1 can also occur in a proximal occlusion of left anterior descending coronary artery but then the difference is that you will have maximum st elevation in v2 in anterior wall infarction here there is no st elevation in v2 st segment is isoelectric so from that feature you can say that this st elevation in v1 is not due to led occlusion but due to left main disease which is much more severe than an isolated left anterior descending coronary artery occlusion so this ecg pattern gives a very high priority for early angiography and for the management according to the coronary anatomy detected on angiography this ecg also shows significant st elevation in avr suggesting left main disease but there is no st elevation in v1 other leads show extensive st depression which is quite significant and the patient had features of pulmonary edema already documented by bedside chest x ray showing pulmonary edema as well after initial stabilization this person underwent angiography which showed distal tight left main stenosis and uh, there were other lesions as well because left main lesions are not always isolated there will be lesions in other territories as well this is another ecg from a person with acute coronary syndrome with very minimal changes you can miss the changes unless you are very careful and correlate with the clinical history you can see that there are initial q waves in lead 1 in avl there is a q wave these are pathological q waves because width and breadth criteria are satisfied width is 40 milliseconds minimum and uh, uh depth is at least 25% of the ensuing r wave here is there is hardly any r wave and there is a shallow t inversion but unless i had marked this at one look sometimes the ccg may be passed off as normal so this limited ecg change of infarction is usually seen in high lateral wall infarction high lateral wall infarction occurs either due to a branch of the circumflex obtuse marginal branch of the circumflex occlusion or a diagonal branch of the left anterior descending coronary artery upper diagonal occlusion both can produce a high lateral wall infarction very often missed in a casual ecg this is an angiogram of left coronary artery demonstrating the circumflex and also the branches of the lad there are lad lesions uh, so branches of the circumflex and lad that is diagonal branches and obtuse marginal branches can supply somewhat similar region this is high lateral region this should be towards the apex and this would be the high lateral region approximately so that's why i said it could be either due to occlusion of a one of the diagonal branches you have many diagonals here this is one of the terminal diagonals this is the terminal lad and you have septals also arising from lad for demonstration that's all so that's why i said this area could be supplied either by a branch obtuse marginal branch of the left circumflex or a diagonal branch of the left anterior descending coronary artery